Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's session. My name is Homa Rashid, and I'm going to be your host. Uh, I'll start off by introducing uh, myself briefly. Uh, I'm a management professional with uh, more than six years of experience working in the development and education sector of Pakistan. Uh, I've had the privilege to work with the culturally diverse uh, teams and in organizations that are creating impact all over the world. Uh, in the education sector, I've worked as uh, a manager research in uh, one of the biggest public sector universities of Pakistan. Um, owing to my passion in communication and my um, thirst for more knowledge, uh, I'm actually uh, pursuing my PhD in the field of communication from the University of Delaware in the United States. As a research, as a research scholar, um, the thing that interests me are the possibilities of uh, social impact through behavioral change that lie at the intersection of communication theory and big data. So that was a little bit about myself. Um, uh, but now let's move forward and introduce our guest for today. Um, he's a big name in the e-commerce sector of Pakistan. Everyone knows him as the co-founder of Taraz, but there's there he has more feathers in his cap than that. Um, as I was going through his LinkedIn profile, he says he's a serial business builder. Uh, how cool is that? So let's just get talking. Great. So hello. Excellent. And thank you for joining us. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks. All right. So Faris, everyone wants to hear about your journey, your journey as a serial business builder. We want to hear how you became the Faris that you are today and uh, what you learned throughout the way. Sure. So I'll try to keep it as short as possible, but uh, I think uh, when I was graduating from my undergrad program, I was at uh, I was uh, doing my undergrad from London. When I finished, I think the options I had were a lot more. Was you, some some of the options I had were the usual structured options in large multinational etc., which I worked, could have worked at. But at that point, I met this gentleman who was setting up this company called the Pakistan Mercantile Exchange, and he the M, he was the MD. He had just been hired, and and he offered me a role there as the second employee after himself. And at that point, somehow, I just found it way more interesting than working for a large established company. And even though, again, I was the analyst there, I was the junior most person there, but I spent three years working with him, setting up that company, which kind of, I think, allowed me to be very comfortable with chaos and work in new unstructured environments and kind of see the, how they come together. So I think that was, at that point, I, I did not know that, but I think it really helped me in my future journey. So I think, say, moving on about, uh, about almost 10 years later, uh, I was actually the founder for the Raz.pk. So I think this is back in 2012. I met this company called Rocket Internet. They had a business idea in mind and they wanted to come to Pakistan. But uh, but they they wanted to come to this region actually. So I met them, I convinced them to invest in into Pakistan and that's how the Raz.pk came about. Um, and I think I spent about the next four years building business along with another uh, co-founder and my colleague at that time. And uh, we built the business from initially as an online fashion store. Uh, moved on to uh, moved on and eventually started selling a bunch of everything for electronics, etc., and became more like a general store overall. I spent about three and a half years working for the Raz, built it from zero to about two million euros a monthly turnover, uh, and then I moved on to something called iFlix, which is a, a company that's actually based in Malaysia, and uh, we are and uh, and you can say Netflix for emerging markets. So I think uh, I was worked with those guys, set the business. I'm from scratch, ran that for about three years. There we got about 2 million signups in Pakistan. We had a monthly active about 500,000 uh, users. Uh, and then I moved on to another company called Vava Cars. It's again, it's, it's a new business. It's a it's a use, online used car sales business. It's an online offline business. So I spent one year setting up their business uh, from scratch uh, and went to, to get to launch. And then I moved on to working on something new, which I'm working on right now, which is not live yet. So I can't talk about it, but it's in, in the pipeline. So that's my journey. Uh, if, if you want, I could talk about the two, two, three, four main takeaways I have, which I think would be really useful for the audience who are listening in. Uh, I, I think the two, three important things, if you want, if you want to do a startup of any kind, tech or not, I think is 
should be very focused. Always remember that it's about the problem you're trying to solve and not about the product you've created. So I think it's very easy for some time people to create a product and try to make that work. But I think it's much more important to understand the problem you're solving and try to come up with a different way of solving. Because I think, for example, when we launched iFlix, it was meant to be a paid platform like Netflix where you pay monthly, et cetera. But very soon we realized that this market wasn't ready for that. And we pivoted completely to a to a paid model. When we launched the RAS, you were selling online fashion business. And our idea was how to make online shopping fun for people in Pakistan. That was our mission. That was the problem. But the initial product we launched was a pair of fashion store, but we eventually pivoted to a fashion so store selling fashion, electronics, et cetera. But I think the important thing here is not to be emotional about what you've built, but to be emotional about the problem you solve. And a good example of that is if, if you, any of you land in Dubai, you can probably see a Burj Khalifa from the airport and you you know that it's the tallest building there. If I ask you that, do you, you know, do you, do you think you can get there? You'll probably say yes. If I say, do you know exactly how you'll do that? You'll probably say, I don't know. So I think the idea is how you're going to get there will change. You'll take different turns and, and new turns and so on and so forth. But as long as you focus on getting to the destination, that's the important thing. And the destination should always be solving a problem. It should never be, how do I make a product work? I think the second thing I think is very important is the people you hire. So I think the people you hire are, are super important. I think you always need to hire. I think the one skill you need in everybody is problem solving. So you should be able to give people basic problem solving abilities and if they have a problem, how do they go about solving it? Because, you know, as an entrepreneur or as somebody in working in a new sector, you will be problem solving problems daily. And a solution you will come up with today, you may realize a month later is wrong. You need to do go back to the drawing board again. So everybody you need to hire. That's the one skill they need to have problem solving. And the mindset they need is they're willing to learn new things and eager to learn new things. And ideally, if you're hiring people who worked a little bit, then you need to see that track record. Uh, and then the people, again, I think people are key, but I think you need to empower people and trust them. So I think hire people, give them and with it. Let them make mistakes and, and then and, and and let them develop uh, that way. Let's say you're working with a 10% team, you're going to increase what the business you're doing or the output of the team by fivefold, tenfold. It's not like an established organization where you're happy with a 10% jump. You need this to go multiple, right? And the way to do that, and how do you let them grow? A very good example of that is if someone comes home in the company and says, hey, I'm in this situation, what shall I do? The quick, easy thing for me to do is, do, is to say, don't do A, don't do B. Do, do A, don't do B. But the problem is, what I would always do is I would say, what do you want to do? And they will say A or B. Then I would say, why do you think that's the right answer? And I will try to make them think through what the right answer should be. It'll probably make me take me 10 minutes rather than 30 seconds to give them the response. And it may take longer to get things done initially, but in the long run, they will grow much faster. The organization will hence grow much faster and our output will increase as a company. And uh, and I think the the last piece of advice I have as an entrepreneur is always know when to quit because there will come a time where the idea you may have may not work for lots of reasons. And I think it's very important to not to be in denial, but to always understand that there may be a time to quit. Uh, you're always one deal away or one client away or one fundraising away from cracking it. But that is not a good enough reason to hold on. I think you should, after, you should think about your personal priorities in life, see where you're going, et cetera, et cetera, and always know that there comes a time where perhaps it's time to pull the plug on what you're doing and work on something else. So I think those are my three lessons I, uh, uh, which I hoped I would be useful for everybody listening in. That, that was very, very valuable. Thank you. So one of the questions that you meant, one of the uh, things that you mentioned and that actually made me think about a question that I wanted to ask you was that you talked about teams, you talked about hiring, you talked about leading people. Uh, so what do you think, what kind of a leadership style actually suits an entrepreneur or a serial, serial entrepreneur like you? What do you think are the characteristics of a leader, of an entrepreneur that will actually, you know, help him establish a team and take his venture towards success? Look, I think firstly, an entrepreneur needs to believe in the vision of the company, which is the problem they're trying to solve. Whether it's solving online shopping for people of the country, whether it's coming up with a way of fixing entertainment options for people, you need to believe in it and you need to be passionate about it. And then you need to have the ability to convey that passion and instill that in your teams. When people come and meet you in a coffee shop as opposed to a swanky office, they may wonder what they're doing this, but you are the seller. I think they come for the person they meet. 
So I think if I give the example of my first role after I finished my undergrad, the gentleman I met at that time, I think I was really impressed by his views, his, his, his vision for the company and for the business and his style of working. And that's what convinced me to actually work for him. Right. So because you don't have the opportunity to come to get them to a fancy office to a nice room etc etc but you don't have that as a startup so i think it's about being very clear in your vision and selling your passion to the people you meet and selling the journey mm -hmm. so do you think it's necessary to be charismatic and with that i'll pitch my second question do you think entrepreneurs are born or they're made because uh, as you said and I, I was hearing one of your interviews in which you said that we make decisions quickly so we make decisions quick if we find out that the decision isn't right we go and correct it but we we make decisions quickly that that's what happens in an environment of a startup so for for be for being able to do that you need to be a risk taker and everyone isn't like that so what are your thoughts on that how do you look look about this Look, I think to be honest, when you're born, no one is an entrepreneur at that moment. But I think I, I think what you really question is, by the time you live 18 years of your life and you spend time in school and college and so on, a lot of conditioning actually comes into you. So for yeah. from your families, from your school, it's from your college. So I think no one's born an entrepreneur, but I think that conditioning plays a part. Um, mm -hmm. Having said that, I think it's like I said, it's not something that cannot be, can't be taught, I think, because I think it's more about your the i think people who have never taken a risk and are left pretty risk-free life I can at some point decide you know what this is the right time for me so i think it's a lot about your mindset that mindset can be something you're born with it can be something which you get inspired by 25 30 40 years into your life so it can be either you're not necessarily born with it but you need a certain mindset to be willing to go into it yeah mm -hmm. and with the startup ecosystem flourishing in pakistan we've seen a lot of investment being done here so um universities have started teaching courses on entrepreneurship and etc there are a lot of programs that are happening um i feel that we have we have reached a point in which we're starting to push people into uh being entrepreneurs do you think that's the right approach or do you think the policy needs to be changed? Look, I think uh, I, I'm, I'm not very clear on what the local universities are pushing in a very specific level, so I won't comment on that. But what I will say is that I think the skills you need for entrepreneurship are actually skills that are very useful for lots of other professions which you do. So I think uh, teaching people those overall skills is very, I think it's important. Whether they choose to do something on their own now or whether they do it later in life, I think those are important skills and there's nothing wrong with pushing those. Having said that, uh, from my experience, I think I went to a business school which is known for entrepreneurship. Having said that, I almost picked no, picked no entrepreneurship courses because my focus at that time in life is very different. So I think it's not something which you cannot do if you're taught, but I think it's much more about getting more generic general life skills like problem solving, like finance, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I think picking strategies uh, and Think, have the ability to analyze companies, analyze sectors, analyze uh, basic problems. I think that's more important. So whether whether that happens in a more structured manner, focused on entrepreneurship, or whether that happens as a byproduct of other stuff you study, I think it either uh, it works either way. Uh, but I think the important thing is to fo always focus on how to build a business, not about how to build a product. If I use an example from a completely unrelated industry, there will be a ton of restaurants that will open in Pakistan which will serve really good food that tastes really good, but they will not work. And there may be food, restaurants which have food that is all right, it's not amazing, but they become success, super successful because it's not about purely about the business product you have, but it's about the entire business as a whole. And that's how startups need to be thought about. Oh, that, that, that was interesting. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, now we're going to pick some uh, students and youngsters from our audience so that they can come up and ask some questions directly from Mr. Fariz Shah. Assalamu alaikum. I am Muhammad Salman Khan from Swabi. I am the student of mechanical engineering from Sarah University Peshawar. I am also the student of IDIGES dot IDIGES code two. Uh, my question from Farisha is: uh, mm, Is a small business retailer? How I reach to a maximum of customer in the least possible time? Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Atka Sheikh. I am a student of Mehran University, Jamshuru, and currently pursuing MBA in Entrepreneurship uh, and Innovation Management. 
I am student of Kamyab Jawan Startup Program Cohort One. My question is to uh, Faris Shah. So, sir, being Pakistan number one e-commerce based business, my question to you is that our small businesses are part of your strategic plan. If yes, then how there are helping small businesses owners to grow their businesses? Thank you. So, uh, thank you for the question. Look, as far as uh, just to cl clarify, firstly, I was the co-founder of the Raz back in 2012. And I was running it uh, as co-founder slash CEO till about for the first four years. So I can speak about that time and probably a more relevant time because there is no longer the startup. It's obviously a massive organization. Um, but I think uh, obviously when we started working as a pure online fashion business, we worked with a bunch of small fashion brands selling shoes, selling clothes, et cetera, et cetera. Some who were well known, some who were not. And a lot of them actually ended up growing with the RAS. So as we grew and we needed more and more brands to work with us, there were a number of them who came on. And the business wasn't reliant on the RAS in, uh, only. They were selling either in the offline market or other, on their own platform, perhaps, but it gave them a nice boost. On the other side, we work with a bunch of different service partners, like, say, logistics companies. So we work with a fairly small logistics company who were new, but they were willing to innovate, and we worked with them and developed a lot of the processes with them. So I think they, at the same time, there were larger logistics partners who, while they were massive, did not have certain services which we required or e-commerce required. So we not only helped small businesses, but we kind of created an entire ecosystem which helped other businesses uh, come into e-commerce and start and plug and play. Uh, so Man, as far as your question is concerned about the fastest way, that's the million dollar question. Everybody wants to go fast, of course, but I think, look, I think the key here is if you look at in terms of every startup has a limited budget, and even if you have a lot of money, I would not recommend spending too much early on because you need to find the right balance between scaling your product and improving it and your offering and and uh, scaling your marketing. So I think the best way to start is spend a few dollars, some money on uh, digital marketing. And uh, obviously the marketing is not very generic where you're not putting a banner on the front page of YouTube, but you are targeting people based on your interests, on their interests, depending on the product you have. And it's the most important part of this is this needs to be if not daily, at least weekly optimized. So you have a bunch of campaigns and you evaluate the which, are, which ones are working well, which ones are not. And you constantly tend to, so the ones that work well, you spend more money on them. The ones that are not, you kind of limit them or you stop them. And the key metric here to focus on, so, so as a startup, what we would like to do is always spend any money on acquiring new customers. And existing customers who already transacted on your platform, they, you can either target them with stuff like newsletters or SMS promotions, or you use your things like retargeting. So you spend a little to no money on them, but all new money should be spent on acquiring new customers. And the key metric there is the customer acquisition cost. So if I spend $100 in a day and I acquire 10 customers, my customer acquisition cost becomes $10, which is 100 divided by 10. So I look at all my campaigns, whoever gives me the lowest acquisition cost, uh, those are the ones who I, those are the campaigns I spend more money on. And obviously when I say acquire a customer, I mean somebody in the case of the RAS who actually transacts on the platform, not someone who just visits. In the case of iFlix, that would be somebody who signs up for the service, not somebody who just comes and looks at the website again. So I think digital is, is super important because the most efficient in terms of money, it's also the most easily trackable where you can say, okay, I spent X dollars on this campaign and this is what I got. So I think focus on digital and gradually increase as you increase your balance as you increase you make the product stronger make the marketing uh, stronger but keep optimizing every single day um look i think to sum up there's two things i will say which is a key message be obsessive about the problem you're solving and not about the product you've made if you've chances are that if you've solved uh, if you are trying to solve a problem your product will continue to evolve until you get to the right solution but if you became obsessive about the product you've created, and if it's not the exact right one, it can very easily go to a dead end. So always try to solve the problem, even if it means you need to completely evolve and redo your product from scratch. Because if you're trying to solve a problem, you have a business. If you do not, uh, you do not have one. And keep in mind that if you're doing a startup, you may have a nice computer science fancy degree, you may love programming, but you are there. If you succeed, you have to create a successful business. The product can be average, but the business has to be solid. The other way around will not work. Uh, the second thing I think is people. I think the people you hire, the people you work with are very, very important. Uh, I think you need to look at two things in people. One is analytical ability slash problem solving skills. And the second thing is mindset. You need to see whether someone's worked or not. You need to, to see the ability to solve basic problems. 
if they work before, you see that in the track record, whether they have the ability to just think on their feet and come up with basic solutions to basic problems. The second thing you need to see is mindset, which means they are willing to learn new things. So if you're in a startup and you're doing something new, chances are even you will be solving new problems every single day. The questions they come up with, very often you will not know the answer, but the whole idea is to come up with a solution together. And you need people with you who either if they work before have a track record of being in environments where they don't know much about, and learn really fast or, or it's up to you to assess whether they'll be able to learn things really fast to pick up things new fast and be comfortable in an environment where they don't know much but they're happy to learn those are my two main takeaways thank you very much Fariz for sharing your experiences with us I'm pretty sure they're gonna be beneficial for budding entrepreneurs and everyone who just like to follow your footsteps